Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to its rainmaking time. You know that we've produced eight shows on climate and weather, that I love the environment and animals and nature, and that I am really into open inquiry about things. And sometimes when you're interested and open to a deep inquiry into something, you stumble across things that are difficult to hear that don't fit your paradigm. They don't fit what you've been taught. And some inquiries reveal a deeper complexity of things that are operating in life and in the world. Well, I have asked Karen Bud Phelan to its rainmaking time today, an attorney for many, many years, one of the principals of Bud Phelan Law Offices, LLC in Wyoming, whose specialty of practices in natural resources, public lands, land use and zoning, constitutional, environmental litigation, agriculture, administrative, and she is very interested in the truth of what's happening with regard to land and the environment. She is also part of the Western Legacy Alliance, and it has many goals, but to preserve the working landscapes and lifestyles of the American West by supporting and promoting sustainable land use solutions to ensure social and economic benefits for local communities and the nation. And in talking with Karen, I started to learn about some of the things that are going on in the legal field that are really below conscious awareness for the average person. And I find that she's a very courageous woman who has taken something really into her own hands to investigate the way in which attorneys are misusing their law practices and the legal profession on a financial level in the area of the environment. And I asked if she would be kind enough and courageous enough to share a project she's been working on and her findings. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Karen Bud Phelan to its rainmaking time. Thank you very much. Talk about what you're doing, what you're finding, and what led you to do the kind of work that you're doing right now with regard to this legal investigation. I think that for the last 22 years that I've been practicing law, I was always aware that environmental organizations, radical groups, could receive attorney's fees from the federal government for, quote, winning litigation. And we knew it was happening but it wasn't until meeting with Western Legacy Alliance that we decided to try to find out how big or how much this was. So last June, after a board meeting with the Western Legacy Alliance, I wrote to the Justice Department of the United States and said, so how much money in attorney's fees are you paying out to environmental groups? And the Justice Department wrote back and they said, we have no idea. The federal government has not kept records on attorney's fees payments since 1995 when they passed the Paperwork Reduction Act. That made the Western Legacy Alliance Board very curious as to why nobody was keeping records, and so we figured out a way using computer databases through the federal court system to figure out how much money is paid to environmental groups. And what we found is staggering. Um, at last count, by only looking at a few groups in 19 states in the District of Columbia, we uncovered that the federal government paid radical environmental groups $43 million in taxpayer funding to sue the federal government. I don't understand this. You, you know, when you say what you're saying right now, it sounds so crazy. Explain it. What do you mean? What do you mean that the federal government pays for attorneys to sue itself? I mean, do you understand how crazy that sounds? Oh, I think it does sound crazy. It was all based on a statute passed in the 1960s that I think had very good merit when it passed. The theory was that if the federal government were taking advantage of a small individual and that individual had to go to court to assert their rights and the federal government was totally unjustified in its decision, that the individual could reap back its attorney's fees. It was just to put the individual in the same place as they were before the litigation. But the environmental groups have found loophole on top of loophole 
so that they are now using it, quite honestly, to simply fill their coffers and make money over simple procedural violations. I don't believe at all that's what the act was meant for, and they are making huge amounts of money to do it. How did you find the detail, though? And and and, and what is the, you know, there's always a, a macro and micro concerns. What was the macro concern that guided you to go into this area, though? What is the huge macro concern that's really in the center and the forefront of your concerns? Well, I think there are several, one of which is that these environmental groups are simply litigating to stop land use. Talk about it. They stop private property rights. They stop private uses of private land. And it's not based on concern for the environment or some overarching concern about our planet because the litigation they're filing is over process. It's if, for example, under the Endangered Species Act, the federal government has 90 days to respond to a listing petition. If the federal government takes 91 days to respond, these environmental groups file suit and they reap attorney's fees for that. And so, and the suit's not based on whether the species ought to be listed, whether the land use is harming the environment. That's not the basis. The basis is process. And we're seeing projects stopped over and over again because the federal government can't get the process right. Is that because it's too big to respond to all these suits? I think part of it is because the government is too big and very inefficient, but part of it is because these groups have figured out that if they totally flood the system, that there's no way the government can jump through all the procedural hoops it's required to jump through. And so you've got groups like Center for Biological Diversity saying that they are going to petition to list 350 species under the Endangered Species Act. And the listing process is simply you write a letter to the federal government and say you have to consider this. And even if the, the letter is totally bogus and doesn't have any merit at all, the government is required to take this 90 days and make these findings. And so I think that these groups have figured out that, that they can just crash the system. And that's exactly what they've done. And then they reap attorney's fees for it. So you contacted the Justice Department. They said, we don't know. Then what did you do? Then we figured out that if we looked at computer databases, which have been created in about the last 10 years for all the federal courts in the nation, that each individual case is listed on that court database. And so we have just gone through very slowly, court by court by court, based on individual groups, to figure out if attorney's fees were paid, if the case was settled by the government and attorney's fees were paid, the hourly amount attorneys were charging the federal government, and that kind of information, and then attaching them to the group who was gaining the money. Isn't that a very complex, very arduous, painstaking effort? Yes. It has taken us months to actually put the database together. The problem is, though, the government was not doing it, and they believe they're not required to do it, and it's taxpayer money. I think the taxpayers ought to know where their funding is going to. What can be done about what you're finding? I think the first thing that we need is to force the federal government to track these fees. I think if I, sitting in my little office in Cheyenne, Wyoming, can find $43 million in tax fees, I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I just simply don't have time to go through all environmental groups in all 50 states. It's impossible to do. And many states have more than one judicial district, and so you have to go through it district by district. The first thing is to get the federal government to track it and then to put it on the database so that the taxpayers can see where their money is going. Don't you think there should be a parallel process whereby all the courts have to make that public information as it happens? Well, it is public information on the courts. You just have to get on the database and search for it. Yeah, but you have to really know what you're looking for, 